Nestled within the rugged terrains and serene landscapes of Bulgaria, ancient sanctuaries carved from stone have stood the test of time, whispering tales of devotion and architectural mastery. Welcome to the enigmatic world of Bulgaria's rock monasteries, a treasure trove of spiritual history and artistic achievement. Join us as we explore these divine sanctuaries, some of which grace the prestigious UNESCO World Heritage List. From the awe-inspiring cliffs of Ivanovo to the mysterious alcoves of Aladza, these sites are not just monuments, but portals to the past, where every corner holds a story and every stone tells a saga. Whether you're a history buff, a lover of architecture, or a seeker of tranquility, these monasteries promise a journey that will captivate your heart and ignite your imagination. So pack your curiosity, and come along as we uncover the secrets of Bulgaria's most sacred hidden gems. Get ready to be fascinated by the spiritual beauty and historical depth that these rock monasteries have to offer. We will start our tour from the Ivanovo rock monasteries. They are located next to the village of Ivanovo, south of the city of Ruz. There are seven separate complexes of premises, which are located around seven churches and chapels. Because of the unique medieval wall paintings preserved on the walls and ceilings, the Ivanovo rock monasteries are included as part of the World Cultural Heritage in the UNESCO list. The churches near Ivanovo are part of the hundreds of medieval rock churches, monasteries, hermitages and separate hermitages, which during the XXIV centuries turned the river valley and its tributaries into a Bulgarian spiritual center. In the monastery churches, Wall paintings from the 13th and 14th centuries have been preserved, created by masters from the capital of Tarn, representing the development of painting styles in Bulgaria. The frescoes in the church, St. Virgin, from the 14th century, which are among the peaks in the development of medieval art. Biblical scenes and images are painted on the walls, including the Last Supper, the entry into Jerusalem, the Passion of Christ and others. How to get here? The Ivanovo Rock Churches are located near the village of Ivanovo, 18 kilometers from the city of Ruz. They are reached via an asphalted road from the village, which smoothly descends into the deep river of Rusensky LOM. A convenient parking lot has been built at its end, directly under the frighteningly overhanging rocks of the canyon. It is in these impressive rocks that the most popular spiritual abode of the entire complex is located the Church of the Holy Virgin. Steep cement steps built along the side of the massive rock lead to it. They lead to the back entrance to the church niche, which is a narrow cleft in the rocks. On the rock cliff, near the Church of the Holy Mother of God, there are also several rock niches. It is assumed that they were used as sleeping quarters by the monks who served in the Christian monastery. They also had another important place which for them was something like a window to the world. It is an impressive rock terrace, providing direct visibility to the other parts of the monastery complex in the surrounding area. The so-called path of the old monks leads to it, which runs along the edge of the cliff. It describes a turn through the forest and leads back to the foot of the cliff where the car park is located.
The remaining sanctuaries of the church complex are located on the opposite cliffs of the Wild River Canyon. They are reached by a well-formed forest path of about 1.5 kilometers, which starts at the wooden gazebo near the parking lot. The route to them crosses the Rusensky LOM and takes you at the foot of the impenetrable rocks. The rock monasteries themselves are located very close to each other, and the day tours to them are indicated by signs. They were cut at a height of about 30 meters in natural niches of different sizes. Belbanitsa Rock Church It is accessed via a steep forest path. The rock cloister is relatively spacious and has an extensive niche. Next is the St. Archangel Michael Chapel, or the Overgrown. The rock monastery is reached by a tall panoramic staircase. The rock sanctuary is quite extensive and well-designed. It impresses with its exceptionally well-preserved frescoes. Some of them were on its outer walls, which contributed to their partial destruction. Nowadays, a protective canopy is built over them, which preserves them from the effects of nature. In order to preserve the ancient masterpieces, access to the rock abode is restricted. Baptistery Rock Church Unlike the other sanctuaries in the complex, this rock abode stands out with its heavily smoky vault. The main rooms that make up the church are several extensive niches located on its first level. Each of them has its specific purpose, meeting the needs of church worship. On the second level of the sanctuary, another important room for the clergy is located, called the scriptorium, a room for creating manuscripts and copying church books. It is reached through a narrow oval opening by means of steps cut into the rock. Rock Church, Gospodev Dole. It bears the name of the locality, as its authentic name is unknown. Access to the rock abode is via a low metal staircase that leads directly to its entrance. It is a high natural niche resembling an oval vestibule. And the main room of the monastery is located on the upper level and impresses with the fact that it is extremely well decorated with frescoes. Rock Church, St. Tordor the Demolished it was the most richly decorated of all the sanctuaries in the Christian complex. It is accessible through a wooden bridge that leads into the main room of the sanctuary. A large part of the exquisite church works has been successfully preserved in it. Further inside, an additional room is formed, which is reached by steps cut into the rocks. And from the panoramic location of the rock monastery, a magnetic view of the picturesque river canyon is revealed. There, in its center, the rocky promontory, which houses the Church of the Holy Virgin, stands out clearly. Here too, the preservation of the beautiful and authentic frescoes requires limiting free access to the rock abode. The picturesque canyon where the impressive churches are located is relatively easy to access, and visiting them will offer you a short and relaxing journey back in time. The Madder Horseman, as part of the Madder Rock Sanctuaries, is another historic site included in the UNESCO World Heritage List. Madara is the name of the historical archaeological reserve, which covers an area of several hundred acres, which has been a protected area since 2006. The center of the reserve is around the Big Cave or Rock Shelter, with a height of about 30 meters, and the nearby small cave. Both natural formations gave shelter to the most ancient population of the Balkans. Because of their impressiveness and unusualness, as well as because of the abundant water flowing from the rocks, they have become the largest cult complex in the Balkans, much more ancient and large-scale than Delphi, Dodona or the rest of the oracles of the Greeks known today in Europe. Most scientists initially concentrated their efforts on analyzing and explaining the nature of the Madara relief. According to the first publications, he depicted Khan Krum. A second scientific school connects its creation with Khan Omertag, and the latest explanations of the relatively young generation of archaeologists and scientists are that it is most likely an image of God, the eponym of the Bulgarians. The area around the sanctuary is probably a large-scale satellite settlement of the great cult complex under the rocks still unexplored.
The Madder Horseman is a rock-cut bar-relief located 23 meters from its base. The bar-relief depicts a horseman, a lion, a dog and an eagle. The horseman is dressed in a long robe and has a spear in his hand. The lion is under the front legs of the horse and the dog is behind him. The eagle is above the rider's head. The bar-relief is 2.6 meters high and 3.1 meters wide. The Madder Horseman dates from the 8th century. The Madder Horseman is a symbol of early Bulgarian statehood and was included in the UNESCO World Heritage List in 1979. There is no consensus on who is depicted on the bar-relief. According to some historians, this is a Bulgarian ruler and according to others, a Thracian god. Madarsky Konnik can be reached by car on an asphalt road from the town of Shumen. From the city of Shumen, there is also a regular bus service to the village of Madara. From the village, you can walk to Madarsky Konnik in about 30 minutes. Madarsky Konnik is open for visits all year round. Note, Madarsky Konnik is reached by a steep path. Comfortable shoes are recommended. In the western part of the Golden Sands Nature Park, one of the most remarkable rock monasteries, Aladza Monastery, is carved into the rocks of the slope of the Frangen Plateau. It is one of the few in which separate rooms with different functions are clearly distinguished. Aladza Monastery, Holy Trinity, arose around the 11th to 12th century, when the ascetics monks began to settle there. Its caves were inhabited as early as the early Byzantine era, and the first archaeological materials found their coins and ceramics date from that time. During the years of the Second Bulgarian State, under the influence of the Hesychast movement, the rock monastery reached its greatest flowering. Life in the monastery died down at the beginning of the Ottoman rule. You can easily get here by car or bus, as the turnoff for the monastery is just before the resort. Remains of a three-nave church from the 5th to 6th centuries were found near the medieval monastery. The monastery caves are cut into a 25-meter sheer cast cliff near the upper edge of the French plateau on several levels. The complex includes two small nearby catacombs. Nowadays, the place has been turned into a cultural monument and museum. Its appearance is different from when it was inhabited due to collapses, but visitors can still distinguish the remains of about 20 rooms and three churches. They are located on two levels, connected to each other by a staircase cut into the rocks. There are no overnight accommodations in the monastery complex, but you can stay in the nearby resorts of St. Constantine and Elena or Zlanti Sands, or in the city of Varna, the nearest and largest Black Sea city in Bulgaria.
The next monastery that we will visit is the only rock monastery currently in operation, the Basabov Monastery. The Basabov Monastery, St. Dimitar Basabovsky, traces its origins to the period of the Second Bulgarian Kingdom, 12 to 14 centuries, but the earliest data date from the Ottoman tax registers of 1431. Its most famous inhabitant and eternal abbot is St. Dimitar Basabovsky, born in 1685 and spent his whole life in the monastery. The Basabov Monastery is located 10 kilometers south of the city of Ruz and is very well preserved and maintained. Although it fell into disrepair during the Ottoman rule, the monastery was revived in 1937. It has a unique church with a semicylindrical ceiling that distinguishes it from others that have flat ceilings. Nowadays, the Basabov Monastery is the only functioning rock monastery on the territory of Bulgaria. The path leading to it passes through a beautifully landscaped yard and ends with a well dug by Father Dimitri. The water from this well is believed to be healing. In the monastery itself, visitors can see the rock church with a wood-carved iconostasis, as well as an icon of Saint Dimitri in full height. In addition, there is a natural cave here, which acts as an ossuary, and a museum collection is arranged in it. There is no possibility of accommodation in the museum, but you can do this in the nearest city of Ruz. Between Kronevo and Shabla, in the sheer cliffs above the sea, over a hundred rock caves and niches have been discovered, which have been used for religious purposes since ancient times, this is Yailata. In the Middle Ages, monks also lived there, and there are records of religious services being held in some of the premises until 1940. The Yailata complex is located 2 kilometers south of Cayman Briag and 18 kilometers northeast of Kavana. It is a seaside terrace with an area of 300 acres, separated from the sea by rock massifs with a height of 50 to 60 m. The area of Yailata has been declared an archaeological reserve and for the protection of protected species of plants and animals and their habitats, the protected area has been declared. The Yailata Archaeological Reserve can be reached from Cayman Briag on foot along a path following the coast, and also by car along the road from the central part of the village, about one kilometer. The path is not recommended for families with small children, as the bank is steep and high in places over 30 meters, it is also possible to meet snakes in summer. If you prefer to reach Yailata by car, in which case you miss out on many beautiful views, there is a parking lot in front of the ticket center. If you are coming from the south, after entering the village of Cayman Briag, take the second straight on the right and drive straight. The road leaves the village and ends at the parking lot in front of the reserve. If you are traveling from Shabla, Drive through the village until you reach the right turn at the central shop and the square, then turn left. Yailata is a large rock terrace located 10 to 15 m above sea level and approximately as much below the continental level. The water area of the place here is exposed to the stormy winds and nowadays, as in ancient times, offers almost no harbor conditions. A large number of man-made caves, single or grouped in complexes, are located in the reserve. There are 101 of them on Golium Ayala alone, but they are difficult to access. For several years, with the help of cavers, surveyors and technicians, their complete documentation was carried out. The caves are located on several levels in the steep slopes, limiting the area to the Dobruja Plateau and the sea. They were used for millennia as dwellings, and some of them as tombs or churches. During the early Byzantine period, v. 6 centuries, they served as a monastic monastery, i.e. here existed one of the so-called rock monasteries in Dobruja. There are over 120 burial facilities in the three necropolises from the 3rd to 5th centuries discovered in the reserve. They are carved into the rocky flat plateau, or the sheer slopes. In the southern part of the Yailan Terrace, several tombs from the so-called cave type which consist of small antechambers through which one enters a rectangular burial chamber. Necropolis number one, 
which is located along the ridge of the rocky shore rising about 50 to 60 meters above the sea, was studied more systematically. In the northern part of the flat terrace, the so-called Goliama Yaila, you can see the remains of an early Byzantine fortress, built during the time of Emperor Anastasius VVI century, on a total area of 2.5 acres. Traces of five towers, three staircases and one tower gate, destroyed in the 6th century, have been preserved. The fortress gate has two entrances. The outer one was partitioned off with a sliding door, and the inner one with a double-winged door covered with massive wooden beams. Above the entrance, which was vaulted, towered the gate tower, providing better security for the gate and the grounds around it. Yailata not only preserves interesting and significant cultural and historical monuments, but is also a unique natural feature. The flora and fauna are diverse. From here passes the Via Pontica, one of the main migration routes of migratory birds. Twice a year, the migration of 174 species of birds can be observed in this place, and 50 species of them nest in the rocks of the reserve itself. The total number of registered animals in Yailata is over 270. There are also 19 species of rare and endangered plants. If you are an archaeology buff, an avid ornithologist and a nature lover, or simply have a way to the sea near Yailata, be sure to visit the reserve. There is definitely a lot to see there. The reserve is easily accessible from Varna on the first class road E87 in the direction of the town of Kavana. At Kavana, take road 901 to the village of Cayman Bryag. At the very beginning of the village there is a turn-off to the right and a Yailata sign. There is a convenient parking lot at the entrance to the reserve. The distance from the village can be covered on foot. The village of Cayman Bryag offers accommodation and hotel rooms. Again, you can eat delicious local feasts there. The next point of our journey is the Rasboish Monastery. Exact information about the origin of the Rasboy Monastery has not been preserved, but monasticism in this area has a long history. Already in the Middle Ages, the rock caves around the monastery were inhabited by hermit monks. The first information about the existence of the Rasboish Monastery dates back to the 4th century. Then the cave, in which the rock church was later built, was used as a hiding place by the Byzantine troops. At the end of the Second Bulgarian Kingdom, the monastery was formed, and ritual services were performed in the cave. According to the monastery tradition, the Rasboy Monastery was destroyed three times. The church has a single nave with a semicylindrical apse and a small altar. Almost all the frescoes were destroyed in 1941 when a new, mortar plaster was applied. Remains of frescoes from the original church have been preserved on the western façade, as well as in the nave and in the apse niche. On the northern end of the western façade, episodes from the Doomsday, dating from the end of the 15th, beginning of the 16th century, are depicted. The icons that have remained and the utensils are from the second half of the 19th century. You can stay overnight in the monastery even now, but under conditions from several centuries ago. Although there is a power line 50 meters away, there is no electricity here. There is no water supply either. The monastery is located about 1 to 2 kilometers from the village of Rasboishti, in the gorge of the Nishava River, 9 kilometers southwest of Godek, and 79 kilometers northwest of Sofia, where you can stay. The next monastery we will visit is the Albertina Rock Monastery. The name of the monastery, Albertin, comes from a vanished village with the same name, which was mentioned in a register of the Vidin Kaza from 1560. The rock cloister was built into the rock on the north side of the river, using natural caves and additional rooms were carved out and exterior facades and walls were added. The monastery complex is in an easily accessible location and this contributed to its almost complete destruction. It is located on the territory of the Episcopal Vicarage of Kula, of the Vidin Diocese, in the area of Albertin, Albutin, along the course of the Tapalovets River. 
The Albertin Monastery was active in the 14th century, as evidenced by preserved fragments of wall paintings and inscriptions, and the ornaments, earrings, earrings, bracelets, found in the 29 Christian graves discovered. The large number of lay burials alongside clergy indicates that the monastery was a revered and desired resting place for its donors. The monastery complex was built in the limestone massif on the north side of the river, at a height of about 25 meters, using shallow natural caves and rock shelters, and additionally carved rooms and niches with religious and domestic functions. The complex consists of eight rooms, with the monastery church located in the middle sector, in the most concave part of the curve of the rock massif. It has three naves, oriented according to the canon from west to east, and its southern and southwestern parts have been completely destroyed. In Polomayeto, there is nothing bigger than the Great Nisova Rock Monastery. The Great Nisova Rock Monastery, Saint Saint Constantine and Helena, dates from the 11th century. It is located about 7 kilometers south of the village of Nisovo, upstream along the right bank of the Mali LOM River on the territory of the Rusensky LOM Nature Park. It is believed to be the largest of all the rock monasteries in Polomayeto. The rock cloister is reached by a steep staircase cut into the rock. The current remains of the rock complex consist of a temple and cells cut as extensions of existing caves. There is no asphalt or parking near the monastery. It starts from the bridge over Mali LOM near the village of Nisovo and walks for about an hour and a half against the current along the right bank. Most of the time along the river it is passable for a bike but occasionally you have to get off. The monastery is visible above an overgrown meadow by the river. It is reached by a dizzying staircase cut into the rock. The remains represent a temple with two dug-in stone burial troughs and cells, as if extensions of existing niches. The rock monastery, Svita Marina, is located near the Prokhodna cave, Karlukovo village, commune. Lukovit, it dates from the end of the 13th and the beginning of the 14th century. It is located on the right bank of the Iska River, opposite the Karlukovsky Monastery. The monastery is a cultural monument of national importance. Its wall paintings are a sample of the Paleologian Renaissance, executed in the style of Theophanes the Greek and carry the spirit of Hesychasm. Nowadays, the temple has been rebuilt almost from the ground up in the form it had seven centuries ago. A significant part of the territory of Bulgaria is covered with calcareous terrain, or the so-called cast. Over millennia, nature has sculpted a cave kingdom of shapes, stalactites, stalagmites, and strange formations in such rocks. A whole architectural wealth is the Karluk cast complex, which is easily accessible from Sofia, about 112 kilometers in the direction of the Hemus Highway, to the town of Lukovit. The frescoes of the church, St. Marina, executed by a first-class master, are fragmentarily preserved. According to the stylistic and iconographic features, they date from the 14th century. About 5 to 6 kilometers northwest of the Karlukovo railway station is the rock church, St. Grigory, in which two layers of wall paintings, from the 14th and 17th centuries, have been preserved fragmentarily. The Svita Marina Rock Monastery is located near the Prohodna Cave. There is no transport access to it, yet it is extremely attractive to visitors. It can be reached by starting from the cave house, where the tourist center is. The path is not long, but it is steep, and although seemingly safe, it is quite dangerous. Metal ropes have been placed in places for support, and it is recommended that people with a problem with heights do not attempt to walk the path. The view that opens in front of the monastery of the visiting Iska in the spring is worth the effort for sure. The Ozma Rock monasteries are connected with the religious, cultural and educational life of the Second Bulgarian Kingdom. They are located on the southeastern slopes of the Osmarski Boas area of the Shumen Plateau. Kostadin Monastery, the largest and best preserved of the Ozma monasteries. 
It is believed to be related to the name of Tsar Constantine, king and autocrat of all Bulgarians. It was carved at a height of 8 to 10 m, in a sheer cliff. An altar and fragments of wall paintings can be seen in it. The largest and best preserved monastery here is Costa de Novia. It is carved into a sheer limestone rock, at a height of about 10 meters. Access to it is via a metal ladder, it's stable, but still scary when you look down. And once upon a time, the monks used to climb using a rope. The Ozma monasteries are located north of the village of Ozma, at the end of a picturesque Boaz. With a more passable car on a dirt road, you can get very close to the monasteries and Okoto. The walking distance is about 3 kilometers. In direction. If you reach a fountain with a stone cross and a wooden gazebo, then you are at the foot of the monastery. From here begins about 20 minutes of steep ascent. You will then come to a metal ladder that rises steeply into the rock. It will take you 10 meters high, right into the Costadino Rock Monastery. It consists of two rooms, the eastern one being a church with an almost square shape. An altar and fragments of wall paintings can be seen in it. The western room has numerous niches, grooves, a monk's tomb and rock-cut pomegranates. As soon as you go down the metal ladder again, you will see the Osman's eye rock phenomenon. It towers right above the monastery. The path is quite steep. About this bizarre rock formation, the great Bulgarian prophetess Vonga said that it is the fourth most powerful energy center of Bulgaria, after Rupite, Sarakina and Madara. To the right of the stairs, you can reach the other rock monastery directly after. It is supposed to have been used as a prison. Monks who did not strictly observe the Hesiakian teaching were imprisoned there. Kankrumovo Rock Monastery is our next destination. It is located on the Shumen Plateau, near the village of Khan Krum, on the western slope of the Kalugara Boaz. It is part of the complex of rock monasteries, churches and monastic cells inhabited by Hesychast monks in the 12th to 14th centuries. For the rock monastery next to the village of Khan Krum, a natural cave was used, which was further adapted and finished for the needs of the monks. The temple is artfully and precisely carved right into the rock. The monastery church differs from other rock churches in the region, in that it has a conch, from Greek conch semicircular niche. To get to the rock monastery, you can use a car on the road that starts at the end of the village. You reach a stone fountain where you can leave your vehicle. On foot it takes about one more hour to walk first on a stony road and then through a forest. The path winds and narrows and leads to stone steps cut into the rock. They lead to the Kalugara cave. Kalugara cave forms the main part of the complex above Khan Krum. It is reached by means of steps cut into the rock. Because of this feature, it is also called the stair cave. The staircase is double. Initially, it starts in an easterly direction, and after a small platform approximately in the middle, it turns to the west, entering the rock, and thus a kind of boundary wall is formed on the left. Above the last step to the entrance was a wooden roof. The Kalugara cave is divided into three rooms, using a natural cave that was finished with hard tools. The eastern room represents the church, and has approximate dimensions of 4 by 7 meters. It has an apse with a cylindrical vault and two symmetrical niches. To the left of the apse there is a larger niche. Grooves can be found on the floor, walls and ceiling, which in the past served to attach a wooden iconostasis separating the nave from the altar. The church is illuminated by two natural openings in the rock from the south. The middle room is the vestibule and is approximately 3.5 by 4 meters. It is a continuation of the entrance tunnel and probably had a wooden floor. At its bottom, a rectangular niche has been dug into the northern wall. The western room is the smallest, measuring about 3 by 3 meters and about 2 meters high. There are two large openings in the south wall, which were probably closed with wooden shutters. 
And the views from the rock complex are truly stunning. Voinovsky Rock Monasteries The sanctuary is located next to the village of Voinovo, Silistrensko. It includes the cave and altar at the foot of which Thracian pottery was found. The area around it is saturated with rare natural phenomena. Adjacent to the sanctuary is a cave used as a cell by hermit monks, who carve numerous signs and figures into the rock. To get here, you need to drive along the road Dobrich Silistra and stop for the village of Voinovo. After passing through the entire village, about three kilometers, after its end there is a turn off to the left. At one point, the dirt road forks, but you must continue straight. A little before the sanctuary there is a unique cave, Little Bajalia. From what we saw of it, there is one large hall with two circular openings in the ceiling a small one and a large one. On the left, through a small tunnel, you can go up about three to four meters above the floor level. There are small tunnels everywhere, some of them are not very long, but there are also a few that are very narrow and continue quite a long way. I don't know where. About 100 meters after the cave is the rock sanctuary, located in several caves in the rocks. It is the northernmost of the five sanctuaries in the area dedicated to Zalmoxis. Cult practices took place in a hard-to-reach cave, accessible by a rather dangerous ladder and a bit of climbing, as well as in the rock shelter. The sanctuary has been active since the 6th century BC. Until the 4th century AD, when Christianity began to take hold in the Roman Empire. The Troitska Rock Monasteries are located about 2.5 kilometers in the Troitska Boas northwest of the village of Troitsa. One of them is carved into a rock with the name Momina Scala, or Mother's Rock. The other rock church is known by the name Monastery. It is composed of two compartments with preserved grooves on the floor and walls. Divdiadovsky Monastery gave the name to the eponymous district of Shumen, and in fact it was named after the monk who lived there, whom people called Wild Grandfather. It consists of ten cells carved into the steep slope of the plateau. Along the path that leads to the cave, there is a rock massif that attracts rock climbers with its over 30-meter-high cliffs. There the trail splits into two, and one of them is called Extreme. This path is a section of almost sheer rock with protrusions, as if he had carved steps into the rock. Climbing the steps is only suitable for well-prepared hikers. Climbing these steps in bad weather and snow is especially dangerous. The paths converge and branch off again, one leads to Divdiadovsky prison, and the other is the exit to the plateau. Access to the cave is restricted by a grate, because of the unfortunate accidents that have befallen inexperienced tourists. After the grate there is a rock outcropping, several meters large, and very narrow about one step. After this narrow path there is a rock niche, next to which is the entrance to the Divdiadovsky Zandon cave. Divdiadovsky prison has a double entrance. To enter through one entrance, one must descend about six meters down, secured by a rope. For this purpose, there is a steel wedge driven right at the entrance of the cave. The second entrance requires climbing sheer cliffs. Divdiadovsky dungeon is filled with cave galleries. Bats live in it. Some of the galleries are such that one can hardly walk through them without crawling. The cave has beautiful arches and large halls. As our journey through Bulgaria's majestic rock monasteries comes to a close, we hope you've been as enchanted by these ancient sanctuaries as we have. From their awe-inspiring architecture to the deep spiritual tranquility they offer, these sites are truly some of Bulgaria's most precious gems. If you enjoyed this exploration and would like to discover more incredible places around the world, don't forget to hit the like button. Subscribe to our channel and turn on notifications to join us on our next adventure. 
Thank you for watching, and we look forward to bringing more fascinating stories and breathtaking destinations right to your screen.